Right, so let's carry on. Um, I've put actually put the PC that I'm building on on sleep to take a break, and unfortunately, it was unable to resume. It kept on restarting and bleeping every now and then, so I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it. Um, so I've had to re well shut it down with by holding the power key and then reboot and set everything up again but it's reminded me to take the opportunity to check uh, the LFS book, book boot strips file which if you remember from previous video I downloaded and the MD5 sum was giving a different signature um, if I check it here at the moment the one that was downloaded yesterday was as you can see completely different so what i'm going to do is download this one again being as the md5 sum hasn't changed it's obviously still different and check to see if the file has been updated uh, now i haven't got wget in the troot yet so i'm going to have to go outside of the troot and Going to mount LFS sources and fetch the file here. So this won't overwrite the original one, it'll just create another file with a index after it. So you can see it's got added 0.1 to the file. But now if I do MD5 sum LFS star, you'll see the new one has actually got the correct MD5 sum. So in fact, if I run md5 sum minus c md5 sums, they should all pass now. Oh, no. oh right, okay, it will do after I rename the file. So, so what I want to do is to remove the old file. You can see they're even different sizes as well. So as I say, despite the fact that the same file names They've obviously been compressed differently, compressed by a different person, compressed by a different version of XZ, something subtly different about them. Um, and that's the value in MD5 sum. They could even be exactly the same size, and if the contents were slightly out, even by one bit, the signature would show that. So I'm going to delete the incorrect one and rename the correct one to the correct file name and I'll rerun the md5 sum check and you can see it's all passed now there's no error messages so that shows that we've now got a complete set of packages uh, that are correct so yeah I entered the true again as I say I'd set everything up from scratch uh, just quickly, perhaps I should have recorded this, but um, all it was is mounting the uh, root partition on, well, first of all, setting LFS again to equal MNT LFS, then mounting the partition using $LFS, then mounting the virtual file system, so it's that command there and those four commands there, and finally re entering the troot environment by using that command there and also if you remember I added in the make flags equals minus j4 just at that point just after that command so that's where I've got back to today so it means I've lost all my history if I want to recall what I've done um, uh, sorry no the history within the truth is still there that's right it's the history outside of the truth won't exist reason being the history on the truth is on the hard disk so this is the permanent Linux from scratch that we're building. So you can see the first command I've done as I've entered the true is echo make flag. So I'll repeat that and you can see that the make flags is actually set. So we're all set to go. Um, so remember the last thing I did in the previous video was glibc. I can just verify that by, for example, looking at that file there. Uh, probably in bin. Uh, 
there it is there and you can see it was uh, late late yesterday at 20 to 7 so that is indeed there so the next thing is Zlib start building that so once again we go through the motions for each package of extracting the package changing into the directory that's been created and then copying and pasting the commands whilst also reading the text that surrounds commands for anything important. So initially this might be a little bit slow because it's got to load all the tools. Uh, well, sorry, no, it would be less the tools and less the libraries actually. It should be thinking about it because we've built everything. There shouldn't be anything that loads off the USB actually, um, unless it's you know, the odd file for the kernel, something like that maybe. Um, every program, every library that should be used should be what we've built in the uh, cross tool chain that we've built. So yeah, again, we're in chapter eight. I'm going to be testing every single package. I want to be sure that what I'm building works well, that I've not missed anything, made a mistake that's caused um, significant error in the build. Um, it might even point to an error that would prevent me from building much further on and uh, therefore potentially save me some time. Right, yes, I, sh I should try and get a new mouse. The center click button's a bit ropey. Okay, so that's Zedlib, that's a nice small one, which is good. It'll ease us into the building process gradually. One thing when you're following the commands, if you think you've come to the end, don't click the links up here because there may actually be some more information or may actually be some more commands or optional commands further down the page. So what I recommend is that you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page just to double check that there's not anything else. I've, I have made a pass, uh, mistake in the past when I was first starting out with Linux from scratch. Um, thinking oh, the make, make install is the last command but no as you can see in this example if this was off the page I'd miss that um, command there to remove the static library so now we're on to bzip so what's happened here I've done the tab to get the complete file name but because there's a patch involved with this one it's not completed so that's a good little check to show you that the patch is available or at least something else is available. It could also mean that the uh, directory hasn't been cleaned up from last time. So if I did that again now, obviously it's going to do the same thing. But if I tab a couple of times in addition to that, you'll see that there's a directory there because I've just extracted it. Well, had that been from the previous extraction of bzip2, that would tell me that I need to stop the extraction. So I'll do that. And I need to actually uh, delete the previous directory because I don't want to reuse that, any of that. Um, yes, the extraction will overwrite any files that might be modified, but it won't get rid of any files that have been generated and therefore may, may be skipped being built. So that's worth knowing. So let's extract it once more. Again, it stops because it's got a patch file. If I tab twice, you can see the directory is not there. I know it's just a patch that's stopping the auto completion from continuing. So I can just fill it in myself, the rest of it. So now, first thing we'll do is apply the patch. And a set command. And another one. Oh, you'll have to excuse this. It's quite getting quite difficult to use this mouse. So then we run in a couple of commands for. Yeah, I'm going to have to go and get another mouse. Well, I'll do that while the building's in progress. Uh, let me type this in from. I'll put it in from scratch, right? Okay, and then we run a make clean. 
and then we can actually start building the package and this includes a test it looks like this mouse button is actually working normally again now and install the programs install a shared library and copy the shared library so this is all one command this four commands so I'll copy that all in one go that's okay and again remove a useless static library and that's bzip2 done so now move on to xz Oh, another thing I've done, you might have noticed, because um, the website's been updated, I'm actually browsing the web pages from the Linux from Scratch website, um, which also means there's a slight pause between the loading of the page now, because it's got to fetch the pages off the internet, um, not as fast as, obviously, uh, loading them locally from a local server. So, extract XZ. Configure it. And build the package. Check the package. All OK. And install the package. And that's complete. So next we'll go on to Z standard. So there's no configuration, we just compile this. Um, and for the testing, it says the output, there are several places that indicate failed. These are expected and only failed in capitals is an actual test failure. There should be no test failures. So we'll see what happens. This takes a little while longer than the other compressors. Okay, that's complete, so I'll run the tests now.
Okay, that's tested. There's no reports of any failures, so we can go ahead and install the package. Right, I'll type this in, I think, uh, in the right window. Make prefix equals forward slash user install. Let's try this again. So that's said standard complete. And we move on to file. So this is another straightforward package. There's several GNU packages which are fairly straightforward to build and install. Uh, this being one of them. So build it. Run some tests. All okay, there's no reports for any errors. So we'll install package and that's file complete. And then move on to read line. Okay, and that's stopping because of a patch, so that's fine. So we've got two set commands. Because my center click is not working very well, I'm going to attempt to copy both of them. Yeah, there's no output, so they've worked. Now let's put the patch in. That's fine. Configure. Build it. Install it and install some documentation, which I think is always very handy to have on a system. So that's read line built. Move on to M4. So as again, another GNU package that's the basic or well, not basic, sorry, uh, simple uh, configuration and build. Okay, let's build that. Check the results. So this all passes there, a few skips, 
but the main thing is there's no errors or failures so we can install now and that's complete let's now move on to BC for compilation with this command here so it's configuring the compiler by the looks of it for optimization that's done and we'll run make that's complete run the tests now right so it says all tests passed there. I uh, don't think there's any other. No. Uh, that's a point I didn't set my scroll back again. Okay, so we can now install. And that's all done. Flex next. So configure. Make. And check. It says it's going to take half an SBU, so hopefully I'm going to quickly nip away and try and find a mouse and plug it in. The problem I've got is that the machine I'm using is not that close to me. Um, and I need to find a wireless mouse, otherwise a wired mouse will be a bit of a problem. But I'll see what I can find, so we'll see if I can... Uh, Get there and back quickly. Okay, right, I've managed to grab the first mouse I saw, which happened to be a wired one, but the lead's quite long, so hopefully it won't cause any problems. Uh, so we've got... Uh, f no fails there, everything's passed. So we can install that now. Oh, right, this mouse is really slow. <laughs> it's a very old mouse, but uh, I have to modify the speed of it, it's, or I need a bigger desk. Uh, so uh, yeah, you might see the mouse just dragging like that because as I say, it's a wide one, it's hanging off the uh, edge of the desk. Let's see if I can... Okay, that's still quite slow. Right, that's pretty reasonable. It's not perfect, but it'll have to do for now. Uh, right, so yes, that's passed. So now I'm going to install the package. That's better. That'll save my finger. It's starting to get a bit sore pressing down so hard. Um, I've got two sim links here to. Oops. These, these buttons on this mouse are extremely sensitive, so I'm going to have to be careful. Two sim links put in, so that sim links okay, and that 
one's okay as well. So that's flex complete. Go on to TCL. So we've got two packages here, one called HTML and one called source. So I imagine it will be the one called source. It doesn't actually say in the instructions which is the correct one, but you know, common sense says it's going to be that one. So prepare it for compilation. We set an environment variable to the current working directory. Change into a Unix directory and we run a configure command. Now we can build it. Okay, that's finished building. So we've got a couple of, well, three sets to put in here. So I'm just going to copy each one of these one at a time. Make sure there's no errors on the output. There isn't, that's okay. We can now undo this source there. And run the tests. I seem to remember there's a point in these tests where it appears that nothing's happening. Even if you go to another terminal and do top, um, it appears the test got stuck, if I remember correctly. But they haven't actually, so it's probably waiting on some I.O. process that must time out eventually. So if you think it's sitting there doing nothing, the hard disk light's not going on. If you've got a hard disk light, there's no fans whirring around because nothing seems to be processing. That's probably the reason why. Uh, just give it a chance to complete.
okay that's completed we've got zero failures so it's all passed what it tested so we can install the package uh, while it's installing I'll just so we can change some of the settings again See how that goes. So that's installed. We've got to change the mode of a file and install some private headers. Create a sim link. Make this a little bit bigger as well. Rename a man page that will conflict with the Perl man page, and then this is optional to install the documentation. As I say, it's always a good idea, I think, to have documentation available on a system, unless there's some security issue. You don't want, if you're creating a system for another user, you don't want to have access to documentation, which is a possibility. I've worked in a place where that was the case. Uh, quite annoying, really, but maybe they don't want, didn't want us to gain any knowledge. Um, they, they never thought that you could get the information off the internet, but there you are. Um, so that's all installed. Uh, tidy that up and we move on to expect. So we start with the configuration command as usual. And build it. And unusually, um, perhaps it says the test suite for expect is considered critical. Uh, expect's not part of the tool chain, but I imagine it's because it's part of the testing uh, environment or suite of programs, so that's probably why it's critical. Okay, so that has completed with no failures so we can run make install and create a sim link and that's complete next deja vu new So we have to build this in a build directory. That's what's recommended. Now we run the configure command. That's complete. Looks like we're creating some text files here. Make install. And finally install the documentation that was created. Okay, now now we just so this is unusual in the fact that we run the tests after the package has been installed, which is kind of a bit weird way of doing things. You wouldn't want to install normally unless you know that what you're installing is good software, but there you go. That's the way Deja GNU works. So number expected pass is 300. Doesn't look like there's any problems with that. Let's tidy that up. And move on to bin utils. So 
So we start with a temporary build directory as usual for bin utils. Configure the package. And build the package.
Okay, it's finished building. So, as it says here, test suites for bin utils, which is part of the tool chain, considered critical. So, if you haven't been running the tests, it's highly recommended to run them for this package and the other ones that are indicated as being important. So, let's start the tests and wait them to wait for them to finish. Okay, those tests have finished. You can see we've got errors. Um, saw some bread go past, uh, but it does say here that there are expected errors. 12 should fail or will fail in the gold test suite when these two options are enabled. 
and three tests in the GPROF NG suite are also known to fail. So we can examine those errors easily with this command here. And you can see we've got three in the GPROF NG as mentioned, and there probably is about 12 there in the gold test suite. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So despite those errors, that is a pass as far as the LFS system is concerned. So we can install bin utils now. So this is the last time we'll be installing bin utils. It's the final version, if you like, the final incarnation of it. And remove some static libraries that are not required. And let's complete. So tidy up and move on to GMP. Okay, so some notes here. If you're building for an X 32-bit uh, x86 and you have a CPU which is capable of building 64-bit code, and you specified flat C flags, then you need to configure it like that. Um, and also note about the fact that GMP produces libraries optimized for the host processor. So if you are planning on moving LFS to this copy of LFS to a CPU with there's an early generation, which as I mentioned previously is not really ideal in any way because you don't know what else has been compiled using optimizations for the current architecture. But um, yeah, you might want to take a chance, I suppose, uh, that you need to add in this command here. But as I say, I probably wouldn't normally recommend it, or if you were to try it, wouldn't expect it to work very well. So let's run configure. to package Build some documentation for the looks of it. And run some tests. Again, critical, as it says there, uh, GMP is used by GCC. Okay, and it says to ensure that at least 199 tests in the test suite passed. Uh, that's interesting, actually. I just realized this is identified the processor as being Nehalem. I presume it's how you pronounce that architecture, and yet I'm sure this was Westmere. Uh, so something I might look into. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it says at least 199, which is a bit of a funny way of wording this, but I guess maybe if you're on 32-bit, you might get more than 199 or a different 
architectures produce different numbers of results or something. So as long as we've got an 199 or more then, then that's okay, which we have. So now let's install the package and documentation and that's complete. And move on to MPFR. So this is to fix a test case on a bug of old glibc releases. And then we can start the configuration. Build it. Build some documentation. And run some tests. So it says there that should be 197 on this one. Okay, so where does it say how many tests there were? Okay, there it is there. So total of 197 passes. So I'll make install and make install HTML. Okay, and that's complete. Um, while that was building, I just quickly looked on the internet about the Nehalem and Westmere architecture. And it seems like the Westmere was a die reduction from the Nehalem's 45 nanometer process to 35 nanometer. So that's the reason for the discrepancy there. Um, despite the fact that the GCC compiler has got an option for Westmere, so I imagine there's still something slightly different about it um, for them to have a separate target name for the processor so maybe although it's optimized it's not optimized itself fully but that's not not a worry so now we move on to MPC and we've got the configure command build a package HTML documentation. Now we check the results of the compile. Seventy four passed didn't say how many to expect, but there's been no failures, so that's okay. 
install the package and install the documentation. And then that's done. So ATTR. Configure the package. Build it. Check the results. It says the test must be run on a file system that supports extended attributes such as ext234. So we are on that, so that's fine. And we've got a total of two passes, no failures. Install the package, and that's that. Next, ACL. Configure the package. Build it. Okay, it says the ACL test must be run on a file system that supports access controls, but not until core utils package has been built using ACL libraries. If desired, return to this package and run make check after core utils has been built. So we could try running it and see what happens, and then we can compare what we get after core utils has been built. So you can see there's some failures there. There's four failures, so I'll make a note of that. ACL first run without core utils. We've got four failures. And I'll just make a note of the fact there's two unexpected failures. And when we've installed core utils, come back to this and um, hopefully we'll see an improvement in the number of tests that have failed. So we'll just install this as it is now and leave it like that for the time being. So what I'll do is I'll leave this tab active. Let's get rid of these two. And I'm going to center click this link to introduce a new tab. Okay, this center click clicks a bit sensitive as well. And carry on with libcap, and then that will remind me that I've got to come back to ACL. So libcap. Put a set command in. Build a package, there's no config. Run some tests. Uh, just says pass there, so that looks sufficient. There's another pass there. There's no errors at the end, so that's normally what happens. So we'll just install this, and that's complete. And move on to libx script. Build a package. Run some tests. Okay, there's no failures there, so that's okay. We'll install it. And uh, it says here that the instructions above disabled obsolete API functions since no package installed by compiling from sources would link against them. But if you need them, then the package needs to be rebuilt with these commands. So in our case, we don't do that unless you know you need that. Oops. OK. 
Okay, now move on to shadow. Um, there's a bit here about using strong passwords to go to this link, which is in the BLFS book. Um, but if you do do BLFS, uh, there's a rebuild of Shadow anyway if you use uh, Linux PAM, which is recommended, and there's other options then anyway. So just going to go with the default instructions for building Shadow here. So I'll put this set command in first. And then this first find statement, we're going to run some set commands on certain files. Um, if you wish to include bin or and or sbin in the path for some reason, modify the path in bash rc after the LFS has been built. Well, that's to do with this. How about using much more secure yescript method of password encryption, which allows passwords longer than eight characters. So I won't do anything optional, just keep to the standard commands. So we'll just put this in as it is. Uh, we haven't, we're not building shadow with cracklip support. So we'll just carry on with the compilation. Run the configure. And build the package. Install the package and some man pages. Now we have to enable shadowed passwords with this command and likewise shadowed groups, group passwords with that command. Um, it says shadows default configuration for the user ad needs some explanation, so it explains it there. Um, if the change, if that action, or well, sorry, that um, default configuration is not what you wanted. It explains how to modify that. Um, basically, the URD and GID numbers start at 1000. Um, and to change default parameters, the file etc default user ad must be created and tailored to suit your particular needs. So we'll create it and set the start GUID to 999, so I presume that means the next one allocated will be a thousand. Uh, there it is there. Yeah, we use the next available number. Uh, create mail spool. This parameter causes user ad to create a mailbox file for each new user. User ad will assign the group ownership of this file to the mail group with 0660 permissions. If you'd rather not create these files, issue the following command. Well, it's probably not, oops, probably not necessary. So we'll put that in to prevent the creation of that mailbox. And finally, we need to set the root password. So whatever you type in here, remember it because you'll need it when you boot up for the first time. Otherwise, you'll have to, to recover from it. You'll have to boot into live USB and set up all the virtual file systems going to the true and re reset the password that way. So that's all complete. Tidy up. And move on next to GCC.